Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. For our inspiration, let's open our hymnal number 12. <laughs> Thank you. 
For our opening song, let's all stand up. For our Pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for the Sabbath day and keeping us safe this week. Thank you for blessing us with another year. Please help us learn a message about you today and watch over those who are driving to church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath to all. It's a beautiful morning, although it's cold, but the sun is shining, and so our hearts are warm because we are here in the house of God to worship Him and to fellowship with one another. How many of you are happy to be here this morning? Amen. Amen. And so on behalf of the Sabbath school officers, the members of this church, I would like to welcome each one of you to our Sabbath School program of the Metropolitan SDA Church. And also, I welcome and happy Sabbath to our listeners and those who are um, in tune and the live stream. We are happy and welcome to all of you. As you know, this week we have been studying about how we are to be managing the resources, the blessings that our master has given us till he comes. And this week, we have learned something that Jesus wants us to learn, not just learning it and knowing about it, but for us to practice. And so for this morning, I would like us to meditate upon these words. And as we continue serving um, God and worshiping Him this Sabbath morning. Let's turn our Bible to Matthew 25, and I'd like to read about these uh, verses. And it's very interesting because Matthew 25 starts about 
the signs that Jesus is telling us before he comes. But I'd like to read starting from verse 31. And if you notice, this is part of our lesson this week. So we're going to focus on that, the Sabbath school. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as the shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did, we, when did we see you in a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, Inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. So with this thought and mind that we can worship God through this, and may we continue worshiping him through, through this Sabbath, and that again, once again, I would like to welcome each one of you. These hills in Kigali, Rwanda, offer a beautiful view of the city. The land was acquired by the Seventh-day Adventist Church from the government to relocate from their old campus. On these 22 hectares of land, the Adventist University of Central Africa, or AUCA campus, reopened in 1996, only two years after the genocide that took place in 1994. This campus offers seven programs. More than 3,000 students are enrolled here. In addition to offering top quality academics, the school equips students with Christ-centered education. A space to worship is important for the students' spiritual experience. Thanks to your contribution to the 13th Sabbath offering, they have a place to engage in fellowship as a student body on campus. In 2010, they received 13 Sabbath offering funds to build a multi-purpose hall that can hold 2,500 students. This building is used mainly by students for meetings and programs. It also hosts the community for conferences and events like weddings. Each Sabbath, this space fills with worship as the campus comes together to praise God. This multi-purpose building has been such a blessing to them, and it's hard to imagine not having it. This will be a, a very big issue because we, we need this every day almost, every day, the, especially on Sabbath and uh, during the week when you have to, to gather uh, many students together and talk to them, we need this, especially during the week of prayer because every semester we have a week of prayer yeah. and also we baptize from here. When COVID-19 hit the world, most of the churches in Rwanda closed for mass gatherings and services were held online. However, this church was able to stay open due to its large size, which allowed social distancing. We were among the churches that were spared even during the time when many of our churches were under lockdown because for having big space, even the authority which could visit us, they said, for you, we don't have any problem with you. You can always meet. So it was a blessing for us to have such a facility. 
the students and faculty can still have fellowship while following safety guidelines. This multi-purpose building is a testimony of how God is still in control in difficult times. Please pray for the students and faculties at the Adventist University of Central Africa. The support from your 13th Sabbath offering was a blessing to them. Thank you for giving to Mission. Back in the early 1900s, a small town in southern Norway called Rukon was established. But from the very beginning, it had a problem. Set at the base of a majestic mountain range, the town would spend half of each year in the shadows because the sun was unable to rise high enough above the mountains to shine into the valley below. Town leaders and citizens knew the importance of sunlight for their health. So they proposed a variety of solutions. One suggested they construct giant mirrors at the tops of the peaks to bring sunlight into the valley below. But they lacked the funds and resources. So they settled for a cable car system that would transport citizens to the top during the darkest months of the year. This is how the town of Rukon dealt with the lack of sunlight for almost 100 years until in 2013, they finally were able to construct those giant mirrors to bring light into the darkness below. I'm your host, Jonathan Hunter, and today, We'll be talking about sunlight, one of the eight components of a New Start lifestyle 
and the letter S in New Start. Even back then, the settlers of Rukon were on to something. They knew the importance of spending time in the sun. Up next, we'll hear from someone else who discovered for themselves the importance of sunlight for our health. So my name is Dana Cole and I live in Terrabella, California. Uh, I grew up in Southern California and my husband and I moved here to the farm about 15 years ago. I'm a chiropractor, semi-retired, but my main job is I run a thoroughbred racehorse farm. Uh, I started um, racing my car in 2020 in August, so it hasn't been very long, but it's very fun. I go about every other month racing. Um, anyway, that's hard to explain. <laughs> As a teenager, um, I was pretty athletic. I rode my bike a few hundred miles a week. I played tennis. I used to roller skate a lot. I would roller skate probably five to 10 miles a day. I was very active. I did a lot of volunteer work and I was really involved. And then uh, I graduated from high school and about a few months later, I got diagnosed with leukemia. When I first got diagnosed, it took a year to find a donor, and during that time I was on uh, chemotherapy. And it was about five years of recovery. I was sick a lot. I mean, I was probably in the hospital once a month. When I got out, they said probably I would live to be 30. So at that point I was 21, and I figured I would give them five years, and I did everything. I said, I'll do anything you say, because I really wanted to live. So for the, the sunshine, I started getting way too much sunshine uh, when I was younger. I was always tan, in fact, my friends called me sunshine because I was really tan all the time. And then the bone marrow transplant with the full body radiation was the final you know, straw that just fried my skin. My whole skin was blistered everywhere. So I had to, because of the leukemia and the treatment, I had to avoid the sun for a long time. Well, as I got healthier, I started adding sunshine back in and having no repercussions. And then about three years ago, I started getting skin cancer. So I had to go back to hat and I wear like these golf sleeves you know, that cover your arms and stuff. I still am outside, but I just protect myself. I'm 50 now, so I guess about 10 years ago, I started like progressively like gaining weight, but I was still exercising a lot, still very active, gardening and walking, and I've got my animals. I love to, I was riding horses. I was very athletic. And all of a sudden I was just kept gaining weight and I couldn't figure it out. I asked my doctor to um, check my thyroid. So I had hypothyroid. So I got on meds for that and it helped a little bit, but not enough. So I just started getting more like sluggish and feeling bad about myself. So about two years ago, my husband started realizing I was really frustrated. I said, why don't you go, you know, to a fat farm? <laughs> so I started, I laughed like thinking of oh, fat farm, you know? So I looked at like weight loss clinic, health retreats, and I looked at all kinds of stuff. Weimar came up, so I looked into that and I read, I watched the video online. I wanted it to be something that would be life, a life change, not something that I was gonna go exercise so hard that is unrealistic to do this when I'm 80. So I was at the dentist here in town and I had told her, cause she's really fit and just is a beautiful woman. Well, at this Weimar Institute, you know, and she's like, exactly, that's how I eat. And, and she's like, go, you have to go, you have to do it. So I came home and she really, you know, encouraged me to come. So I did. One thing that happened when I was at New Start is I found out I had a lot of other health issues. When I first got there, they did blood tests and um, they did the treadmill test. And so I realized on the treadmill test, my right atrium was enlarged. So I had some heart enlargement. I found out I had high liver counts, and um, I was, oh, the biggest one was the high liver counts, but also that I was pre-diabetic was a total shocker to me and high cholesterol because I don't, never really ate a lot of meat anyway, but high cholesterol, that was just like, whoa. So when I came back and had an abdominal ultrasound, they found out that it was my gallbladder. It was filled with sludge and stones. They said, you have to have your gallbladder removed immediately. When I went in for my gallbladder surgery and they told me, um, let me see your blood test. And they're like, why didn't they check your vitamins and your minerals? I mean, that's like the most important thing. They should have tested that. We're not gonna do surgery without that. 
So they went and did the test and like, wow, your vitamin D count is really low. Now I wear a lot, I wear sunscreen, but I try to get about 15 to 20 minutes of sunshine every day without sunscreen, without a hat, you know, to make sure I get it naturally. But I'm taking supplements until my tests go normal. I know one thing is since I've been on supplements and getting more sunshine, I am a lot happier. Like it just brings my mood up, which I didn't even know, realize that I was feeling kind of tired and down. And then once I started the supplements, I was all of a sudden I was like dancing and singing again. And <laughs> once my vitamin D count started elevating back to a normal level, I could definitely notice that my mood was better. It bring, it just brought like sunshine into my life, you know, as a metaphor. I didn't realize how much vitamin D played a role in your emotional well-being. I mean, it really makes a big difference. All I know is I just feel a lot better since I've been eating this way. And I've gotten probably like five or six friends and family members to start eating better. Because what are you doing? You know, that you, you look great. And they're not talking about weight loss because I haven't lost a whole lot of that, but just how I, my demeanor and how I feel and stuff like that. So my parents have gone that way. My dad is a pre-diabetic. I mean, he's, he's a diet type two diabetic, sorry. And um, he's eating this way and it's definitely improved his counts. And I have a few friends as well. New Start um, really helped me understand the benefits of um, sunshine and um, vitamin D and those lectures, they would talk about it, but you really don't get it until you're out and about in the sunshine. And the 20 minute walks that, you know, they uh, requested at New Store is a perfect amount of sunshine. You know, it turns out that's exactly what my doctor recommended.
<clears throat> Good morning, church. Uh oh, I think the, you, you guys are cold. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. If you are cold, say amen. And you know what? Enjoy it. It's going to be hot next week. And you will miss this day when weather is 115 here in Texas. <laughs> so <laughs> we have to praise the Lord for everything. Uh, if he allows this to happen. So happy Sabbath, everyone. We're happy to see each one of you here in Metro uh, today. As every Saturday is special, but today we have a communion Sabbath. And um, we are happy to see each one of you and happy to come again for another lesson study. My brother, happy Sabbath. How are you? Praise the Lord. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Happy Sabbath. Good and good to see you. Yes, we, we amen. We missed you a couple of Sabbath I in know, Sabbath school. I know. <laughs> we had uh, Pathfinder camp uh, winter and we were not here. And then the following Sabbath, uh, we got sick. And then uh, last Saturday I was preaching in another church when I came, but I came in the afternoon. So happy to be back and praise the Lord for his opportunity. May I ask you to please, and I think this is going to be good for you, to stand up so that we can pray. Man. And before we dive into a lesson, today is lesson number seven. Man. And we have a wonderful topic, my brother, is about onto the least of this. Amen. And we will see what is that. So let us pray. Amen. Father in heaven, as we open your word, as we discuss the lesson that we studied during this week, as we summarize and discuss, may you help us to understand Amen. through the help of the Holy Spirit. All of these principles that are important for spiritual growth and a spiritual life and as part of our mission in this earth. May you bless each one of us as we discuss this morning. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Awesome. Amen. Now you may be seated. See, it's good to stand up and move. <laughs> that way you will keep yourself warm. So um, going to the lesson, I'm going to wait so that we can project here a lesson study so that we can look it up together. I'm going to start, my brother, with the memory text. Yes. And then we follow up from there. <clears throat> Our memory text for this week is in Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Yes. And it says there, as we move to Saturday, it says there, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, mm -hmm. Come, you blessed of my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you wow. from the foundation of the world. Amen. This is wonderful. Amen. <laughs> you know, especially living in the United States, we see a lot of strangers. I think that as in Metropolitan, we're blessed because we have people from different nationalities. <clears throat> and when we look at the Bible, the Bible speaks often about strangers about fatherless and the widows. And, and we have to understand as Christians, what is our responsibility with those people? And to understand that our responsibility not only comes, you know, as citizen, but our responsibility come as a opportunity that God is giving us as his son and daughter to also be part of the ministry as we minister to them. You know, when we look at the Bible, we can identify those people today, uh, the strangers, as millions of refugees that comes to the United States. And I praise God because Metro, Metro actually contribute with the refugees, Pastor. You know, every year we go, for example, for the children, the toy drive, the toy drive, we focus and we go to the refugees and we bring them the toys. And it's been a blessing year after year. We also uh, work in the past with Pastor Scott. And, and uh, you know, we went to, um, uh, what does he say, Sharon, Sharon. Uh, with the uh, community service. But what are the, the community there is the uh, Burmese, Burmese, right? Yeah. No, Vietnamese. And then Pastor had been working with the Burmese uh, too, ministry. There. So, I mean, we're blessed to help and be part of that. Man. But, you know, we have all the people as well that we 
need to minister to? Who, who are those people? You know, our lesson this week <laughs> reminds us that we are not the only children that God has. <laughs> yeah. That God is the father to all. And so when we think of his children and those that may be in need, and you've given some examples there, and God brings those people to us, even from time to time. Uh, God brings people to your door sometimes. Some people, sometimes God brings those people to your workplace. And sometimes it's when you go grocery shopping that God brings his children to your way. So our lesson this week basically is saying that for those who are in need, yes, they are still children of God. Amen. And some of them may actually be part of Watch us it. in the church. And that's why I praise God also. Um, that's why we have a special fund. We call it Compassionate Fund. And we always encourage our church members to put something in the Compassionate Fund. We do not announce those who are benefiting from it, but we know that God is using that to yeah. minister even to those who are in need within this church family. Amen, amen. I mean, the lesson mentioned the fatherless, the people that, as you know, um, are being affected by either people in prison or they lose their family. And we also, as we have around us, yeah. we have the widows, people that have lost their their spouse. But you know, I wanna mention one more item there that is not here. But I want to mention those who come from other places that don't have family. Mm -hmm. They don't have family in the U.S. <laughs> and they come here to a new territory. And when they come to church, how wonderful it is when we feel and make them feel part of the family. You yeah. know, providing uh, to them help, sometimes financial help, as you mentioned before, the the, uh, the compassion sure. fund, and and also I see assisting in in many ways, helping them to find a job. Sometimes I see many people bringing them to their home. You can sleep with us. You can stay here, providing assistance in helping them to find a job. On and the most important thing is to make them feel as family, and yeah. that is and that is really. Good. I remember in the past that I that I did that, and you know I was one of them <laughs> when I came to the U.S. I didn't have any family here. And I remember that when I move out and I start, uh, you know, moving into my own apartment, I realized that in the church there was so many of them. So mm -hmm. what I did was in Christmas time, I invited all of them to come to my apartment and we had a dinner all together and they can spend the night. And it was wonderful experience. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it was so deep because when we were talking, I could sense that, you know, that's one, something that they need. And sometimes they come here to the church, they smile. But inside, they have, they have needs. And it's good when you approach and talk to them and make them feel welcome and part of the family. That is part of our ministry as that well. That is actually the, the main ministry because the father wants to minister to all his children. But the father is not going to be knocking at the door of everybody and taking care of them. God wants to use us to take care of our brothers, amen. our sisters, because we all belong to the same Father. Amen, amen. And the good thing is that God is blessing us so that we can be blessing for others as well. Amen. And you know, we have been talking now as an introduction in the Sabbath, the Saturday lesson, the practical way that we can apply this ministry. But the wonderful thing is when we look at Sunday, when we look at Jesus' ministry, his life, how can we take from, from, that, from that lesson? In fact, when Jesus came, we have to understand, number one, why did he come? <laughs> he came because we were destitute. We actually yeah. owed the debt that there was no way we could pay the debt. He came because we were completely lost. He came because we were like, fatherless. <laughs> yes. That was the way we were living. Then he came and he came to give us hope. And in fact, Sunday lesson brings us to the point where Christ declared the purpose of his ministry in Luke chapter 4. And as usual, we want you to participate. We don't want you to just be listening to us. So please get your Bible out and be ready also to uh, comment on, uh, on what we're going to study today. Let's 
find somebody who can help us with Luke chapter 4. We're going to read verses 16 to 19. Luke 4, 16 to 19. We have the microphone. If you have it ready, Luke 4, 16 to 19. He's ready. Thank you. Luke 4, 16 to 19. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Mm -hmm. And as his customs, custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for, to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because Amen. he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Brothers wow. and sisters, did you catch that? Wow. That's the ministry that Christ came for. If we're doing anything different than these brothers and sisters, we need to check our ministry. <laughs> can, can, can you guys help us to understand what did they reveal about the work of the Messiah here in this text? Can you help us to understand that? Please, please. You know, one of the things as, as you think about it, one of the things that we saw here is that the re religious leader, they overlooked the prophecies. Mm. They overlooked the prophecies and they... They look at it in a different way because when they talk about the suffering of the Messiah, they believe the false idea that the Messiah mission was to come and do what? And conquer. Conquer. Give. So they were they were actually thinking <laughs> on an earthly mission. The earthly mission, not the earthly mission connected to the heavenly mission, but it was more on the earthly mission to conquer the oppressor. The liberty and in other ways that we can think about. But when we read, as my brother mentioned, uh, Luke chapter 4, what do we think here, what do we see here about his, uh, the work of the Messiah? Anyone? Anyone? Yes, please, Mika. please. <laughs> Sunday also elaborate how they had ascribed the second coming of Christ to what they expected the Messiah to be like, as you mentioned, conquering. So the mindset of popular teaching then was, oh, he's coming in glory as a king to conquer and all of that. And that was the problem because what they were misascribing his second coming to his first advent and Christ stands up, he's asked to read something and he redirects the people, recorrects the mindset of the people then by actually showing the true prophecies in connection with his first coming. <laughs> you know, Marilla, you mentioned something. <laughs> thank you, Mika. You mentioned something about the poor that is important to understand because the concept they had in the past was that poor people were a curse from God. Yeah, it's their fault. <laughs> But what, when we see Jesus ministry, what, what do we see here? Did, did Jesus actually highlight it, that it was a curse from God? He wanted to minister to them. was ministry. To them. In fact, in all his ministries, if you've noticed in Jesus' life, there's only mention that he was with a rich people, Number one would be Nicodemus, or Zacchaeus, or Simon. With, uh, with Simon. Simon, right? But the rest of his story is uh, who's he with? The poor people, the sick ones. That's who were Jesus were ministering to. And that just tells a lot for all of us, because if you want to be like Jesus, we should be like him in everything that he does, right? Nah. And so he's teaching us that he came not to save those who are rich, mm -hmm. who are um, officials or have names under, I mean, titles in their names, but he came to seek, to seek and save everyone. 
no barriers, no, yes. no Amen. boundaries. Amen. Amen. It's for all. I like That's that. what he came for. There's no Amen. barrier. Amen. In fact, um, brothers and sisters, every time I read this verse 18, something comes to my mind. The broken hearted. Don't blame them. The captives. Don't say it's their fault. Think about it, the people that are addicted. Let's, let's talk about our modern languages now. The homeless. Mm. Those who have squandered their resources. Those who drop out of school. Those who went to jail. And they're just trying to figure out what the future holds. Depressed. Those who are depressed. Emotional. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. <laughs> to me, I was thinking about it in the mental health sense because, as you have mentioned, everybody is imprisoned by something in all of us. You could be imprisoned by depression, by your situation in life. Whatever that is that is imprisoned you, yeah. he came to set you free. Yes. That's what he is. So, you know, that freedom is different for some of us. Mm -hmm. But whatever your situation is, that's what he came for to set you free. Because you're a captive. If not by a situation or circumstance, we know for sure we're a captive of Satan. And overall, he says, I've come to set you free. They were thinking about a conqueror that's going to set them free militarily, governmentally, politically. But he was thinking about their well-being, their spiritual sense, yes. everything that they had not thought about. Thank you. Thank you. We have microphone. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, I believe Je <coughs> the ministry of Jesus. Uh, we are highlighting <coughs> what he's done, but his true ministry was to uh, come and show to us that God is a God of justice. He's just in everything that he does. Uh, Christ came to give all of us an opportunity. Of course, those who were castrated, uh, they were the poor ones. Of course, his focus was on them, but he gave everyone an opportunity to come to him because without him, there's no eternal life. You cannot be saved without Christ. Amen. It's simple as that. And by him coming to show us that what happened in heaven, when Lucifer was there, uh, by trying to persuade the angels uh, of his theory, it was not true. And he came to not show us earthly, but to show the universe that God is a God of justice. He is fair in everything that he does. Amen. 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 <clears throat> There's one thing that I want to highlight here, because sometimes when we see the word poor, we are... We put it in the dimension of Money. monetary. Yeah. And it's not like that. <laughs> if you go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, can you look it up? Matthew 5, 3. What the Bible tells us there? Poor in. Blessed are the poor in, in what? In spirit. And you know what? Even the rich <laughs> can be poor in the spirit. And we all get into that category. The poor in spirit. And he came to seek and save what was lost. And the connection with those who were poor in the spirit, as I mentioned, is the main ministry of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> and in fact, as we, I think we should move to Monday now, looking at the clock. <laughs> yes. God's provision for the poor. In fact, you know, as we study this, one of the good things about our study this week is we need to be asking ourselves, what does this really mean? This is not an intellectual thing that we're just studying. What am I, what am I going to do differently? <laughs> How is this going to change the way I manage God's resources? Because we see here that there was a calling. There was a calling because God wants to make provision for his people, whether they're poor or they're strangers, their widows, their father, whatever God wants to make provision for his people. And so I want us to, again, to go to the book. of the. Let's go to <clears throat> Exodus 23. 
and I need a volunteer to read this for us. Exodus 23, 10 and 11. Exodus 23, 10 and 11. That's a good way for more people to participate. Who is ready? Exodus 23, okay. You shall sow your land for six years and gather in its yield. But on the seventh year, you shall let it rest and lie fallow, so that the needy of your people may eat. And whatever they leave, the beasts of the field may eat. You are to do the same with your vineyard and your olive grove. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so uh, there was a system in the camp. Yes. It was a system. The system was, it was so great that the children of Israel didn't have to go out to go get things from people. They had a system. In 1844, God revealed it to Sister White that the seven days Adventists must have a system as well. But the problem is, the problem is and was that too many greedies, too many of our leaders, they were too greedy. And today, we look at the church, the system does not exist. We have so many poor people in the church. It's a shame. We don't even want to talk about it. Well, you know what we do? We make it general in a general sense. Oh, we all need to put our hands in it to help. No, this is not how God set it up. He set a system, and we needed to follow the system. And we need to stop fooling ourselves, saying, oh, you need to do your part. He needs to do his part. No, we need to go to the system for the system to do its job. That's how it's supposed to be. Well, thank you, my brother, for, you. for your comments. The reality for us today, brothers and sisters, in our lesson today, is especially as we approach the second coming of Christ, is we as individuals, we have to ask ourselves, what am I doing? Because if you go back to the memory text that we read, God is going to talk to us. There will be a group of people, the sheep and the goat. And God is going to address that same question. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. Yep. When I was thirsty, you gave me nothing. When I was a stranger, you did not take me here. <clears throat> so the calling that I see here is that calling as individuals. I, you know, I'm not going to talk about the system today. I'm going to talk about myself. I'm going to ask myself, what am I doing? Because I don't want to be in that group of the goat, that Jesus will say, I never knew you. And so God's provision for us today is that God is blessing me. God is blessing you, and God is asking, are you, as written in the book of Psalms 82, are you defending the poor? Are you defending the fatherless? Are you apportioning justice to those who are afflicted? And if we're not, I think our lesson this week is asking us to make sure we do the right thing. Yeah. That would be my that would be my and, admonition to you, I, brothers and sisters. And I bless I bless God because even uh, the church has the structure and the plan in place with different institutions that help those who are in need. I mean, we have Adra, we have other institutions as well, and the local church also make provision to help those who are in need locally and the community that they work with. Um, and do you know why he wants us, you know, I was, as I was studying that, I realized, for me anyway, the way I see it, do you know why he wants us to practice that? Because that is the very nature of himself. He wants us to do that because in doing that, we keep remembering who Jesus is. How do, how do we know that that's the case? When you go to Revelation, do you know what Jesus said? Do you know that you are poor? Wretched, miserable, naked. You don't even know it. That's our condition. 
So he's doing this to us so that we are always reminded of what he did for you and me who are poor, <laughs> miserable, naked, and wretched. He saved you and I. And he wants yeah. us to not only extend the experience to other people, but in the extension individually that we do to other people, we get to always be reminded what Jesus did for me. Yeah. For me, because and, I'm poor. And there is a big difference here between, you know, when you look at the Bible, uh, there, there is a calling. And the calling is for all of us individually, you know, to defend the poor, the fireless, to do justice, to, to help them, to be there, to do the ministry. And now, when you see there, there's a promise for those who apply those, that principle, the calling, practical. The promise is that nothing is going you're not going to lack of anything because he is the one that is asking you and he's going to bless you. On the other side, Satan is putting in the mind of people that, you know, think about yourself rather than thinking about others. And then we start putting excuses. Like if you do that, why, you know, I, I am here because I did this. So you, you, you're centering yourself instead of centering the calling. Yes. Uh, I'd like to share to you an experience of mine. Personal experience of mine when I was young. Announced to everybody, I was born from a family of culprator ministers. My father was a leader of a group. My mother was supporting him as a culprator minister also. But uh, unfortunately, at six years old, we were four. I was the third one. My father left us for another family. So the means and the resources were all lost. Mm -hmm. We're crippled with one uh, head of family doing uh, the business of, the, of a parent, which was my mother mm -hmm. taking care of us. Being known by the church, so the church took care of us. There was an, uh, the Dorcas, the Dorcas ministry was so active in our church. I was one of the benefit of those uh, church ministry. <clears throat> so the Dorcas ministry, the, uh, the rest of the uh, members of the church knew what happened. Clothes, food was provided. Uh, another affluent family knows that we need something to go to school. They sponsored our schooling. I was one of those. But one thing that caught my mind was that my mother teaching me this. Now, we've been taken care of by the church. I want you to take in mind that tomorrow, yeah. when you have the opportunity, you have to take care of Amen. somebody Amen. else. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise God. We have another hand there. Well, don't get me wrong. Uh, we do, the, many churches I've gone to, we do individual uh, help. We help individually. I've gone to churches where they have a, a partial for <clears throat> those who come in. But this is not what we're talking about here. We're talking about how the whole organization is supposed to do it. It, it, it did not, it was not supposed to leave it to individual churches to do that. It was supposed to do it itself. That's, that's why it was set up for. Now, because they haven't done it, uh, now remember the children of Israel, they had a ways, a way for God to take care of them. He set up leaders. The disciples, it was the same thing. But because of our time, they, are, they fell in to do that, God is going to bring us together. He's going to gather his people. He's going to bring us to a place where he could do that. We could take care of his people where we won't have poor among us. We won't have those who oppress us anymore. We will have individuals who actually wanted to want to do the work they, they were assigned to do. Of course, where well, yes, we do have individual churches who help, yes. But this is not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the organization instead of pulling $1.5 billion a year put it in their pockets, they're supposed to help the church, the members. Yeah. That's their job. Well, you know, and, and I think I think the church is helping. The church is helping. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, <laughs> I understand your opinion. I kind of disagree with that because I, I know the church is helping. But, but going back to the lesson, 
going back to the lesson, when we look at the, the ministry of Jesus, uh, the plan of Jesus is to reach out to the whole world. And, and that's how he, you know, line up in the disciples and working with the deacons and all that. And, and it's being like that until now, working for the sake of saving the, the lost. Now, we don't, we're running out of time, so let's go to the rich young ruler. <laughs> you know, the rich young ruler, again, if you look at the, the title, it seems as if this man had everything. He was rich, he was young, and he had power. Wow, what else you want? <laughs> Sometimes we only pray for one or maybe two, but this guy got the three. But then he was lacking something. In fact, not just I was lacking it, he was actually interested in it. And he came running to Jesus. This is a very familiar story. And he was very, very excited <laughs> to ask about things concerning eternal life. But again, looking at the I'm going to ask you. So Jesus told him and gave him a prescription that he was not expecting. And in his own prescription, this is why it is very important that we bring this to the individual level. Because the Holy Spirit is going to give you some level of conviction that may be different from mine. But at the end of the day, it's because God wants to help you and he wants to help me. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, his prescription is this. If thou will be perfect, go and sell all that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. <laughs> that was his prescription. In fact, that may be my prescription today. That may not be your prescription because Jesus sees your heart. He knows what you are struggling with. He knows how tied you are to your riches. <clears throat> and he will give you the right prescription as we're doing our study today. The question for you, the question for me is, am I ready to take that prescription and follow through? Because the Bible tells us that this man walked away. How? Was he happy? <laughs> was he happy? Was he excited with the prescription? No, no. he was not. And, and the problem here, <laughs> but was the problem here the money or his heart? The problem was not because and, he was and, rich. And why? <laughs> so, see, I mean, does, does God need our money? <laughs> or he wants to reach our heart? <laughs> I think he was waiting for Jesus to say, good job. Since you were a kid, you've been doing all of this. Well, uh, it's really so important to note that wealth or treasure is not evil, per se. It's not wrong to have a lot of money. The problem is if that money possessed me, mm -hmm. if that treasure possessed my heart, because where my heart is where my treasure is there will my heart be also and that was the problem the young ruler <laughs> he wanted to, to know something that he can do for him to uh, to make the assurance and that hope of life everlasting he desired to be to be really saved he, he likes no one among us rich or poor learned or unlearned educated and educated would not have would not like salvation. Everybody wants salvation. But if we don't want to pay the cost of redemption, of redeeming grace, that's the problem. Why? Because I may treasure more of what is in this world than what is in the world to come. I may treasure more what is in my bank than in that is than what is in the bank of heaven. Yes. And that's the problem yes. of the rich young ruler. Yeah. And that's why it's, it's really nice in this quarter, if you have been observant in our quarterly uh, since we started this year, speaking about managing God's goods. <laughs> if we would only be faithful in managing God's goods that he had given to us, we will experience the experience of the children of Israel when Moses said, no more. No it's more. Enough is enough. Yes. <laughs> Ellen White has this to say that if we, as a remnant people of God, have practiced that kind of disinterested benevolence, 
there will be no problem of having uh, shortage in the coffers of the church. Mm -hmm. If we are to practice disinterested benevolence, when I was the stewardship director, I was really promoting in the Philippines, in Northern Luzon Mission, double tithing. And until now, we are practicing with my wife double tithing. Why? Because when we follow that, Ellen White says, the coffers of the church would be not lacking anything. But I don't know because I was surprised when I was a, a, an associate pastor in Miami Springs. My senior minister told me that uh, it would be good if the church here in North America, he's speaking now in North America, 30% would be faithful in their tight giving, in their, in their stewardship. And it surprises me <laughs> because affluent as America and it's 30 percent so third world country like the philippines where i come from the 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 the, the minimum we can really be sure it's 40 percent and above who are faithful in their stewardship and so when we were having the stewardship program in the philippines of you know that in the in in Mindanao, sister uh it's we call it uh double tithing right and 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 when the the brethren practice this double tithing, a lot of churches would have more in their local program, like community service, Dorcas, or whatever uh, service, uh, whatever outreach that we have. And and it's not to brag of myself. When we were practicing all of this in the Philippines, we tripled our uh, our our uh, income that is being remitted. To the, to the mission, to the conferences, to the union. Why? Because there came a point that the brethren in third world country like the Philippines need to be faithful in managing God's goods. That is a problem in a fluent country like America. That's why we need really to think about, am I the rich young ruler? That's a question to be answered <laughs> amen, by each one amen. of us. Thank you, Pastor. Now, uh, okay, we have we had more hands. Yes. Just a quick comment. I, I like what the writer says here because he says it might seem as if what Christ said to the rich young ruler was a bit severe, but you have it in bold red there. It says Jesus knew that this was the only hope for salvation for this, for this person. Amen. Amen. So it's all about salvation. So it becomes a matter go. of the heart. Yeah. There you go. And the writer on Tuesday goes further to say, what did Christ actually offer this man? He offered him to be one of the 12. Now, when you look at it in that context, this guy given an option to be one of the 12 disciples of Christ, because Christ says, follow me. The same call he gave to all his other disciples. This is the writer writing. And in weighing the two between keeping his day job and <laughs> following the yeah. master, yeah. the balance just tipped over to his day job. And that's why it comes off as being scathing. Because a lot of us think like, no, Christ was asking this man to give up the world. No, no, no. <laughs> he was gaining the world. But when he put it in the scale, he was like, ah, I'd rather keep that day job <laughs> than to forever be Rerunning counted as principles. one of the 12 disciples of Christ. Yeah. And who, you know, Revelations 12, the 12 <clears throat> apostles, the names are in the foundation of the kingdom of heaven. So he's giving up all of this for a day job. So when you look at it in that context, right, it's not, Christ was not asking too much, considering what he might have potentially gained. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. We have another. Uh, I, uh, I want to go back to what the pastor was saying. Uh, the system of the two tides, it was created uh, way back in Moses' time. And that system was to be to continue and you're talking about the the north america the you which the church should know that each individual church in the united states you the the church supposed to return two hundred and fifty thousand dollars tied for you to receive to have a pastor if you do not, if you don't re return that amount between 240 to 250, I've researched that. 
you have to do that for you to have a pastor in the church. Now, when we estimate that, the church bring every year $1.5 billion every year. Now, we're looking at our church today. So many poor people in the church. So many people who cannot even afford their meal. But yet, we find excuses saying that it's individual work. It's not supposed to be individual work. No, it's no, supposed no. to be. A, we're a not set. saying, my brother, must... We're not saying. No, no. You are. You are stretching this. We're not saying it's just individual work. Our lesson today, my yeah. brother. Please, you're coming in to the, the same. Name point of the law, please. Let's let's get this right. This is not argumentative. We are at the feet of the cross, <laughs> learning from Jesus. Our job today is to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Okay, and I want to say something here. We are not here saying that the church is this, is that. We are saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? And all the comments we have said here is, we are part of the church. Yeah. Okay, the church may not be perfect. Okay, and that's, we are not here defending the church. We are here to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? We are not dis discussing the systems today. We are not in constituency meeting today. We are here to say, Lord, help us as individual and help us as a local church. If there's anything we want to recommend to the bigger church, praise the Lord. But we don't want to walk away from our study today. Yeah. Picking up. That's the lesson. What could That's be? What the lesson no, is the about. lesson is applied to me. It's, the lesson it's applied is applied to, to the individual. Okay. And so the lesson not, is based that's, that's on Jesus' That's exactly ministry. what I'm saying. It's not in the individual problem. It is let, a let, let organization finish. problem. <laughs> it's the organization that's supposed to do the job okay. that we are pointing at individuals to do. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We heard you. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Let, Thank you. I mean, he's coming back to the same point, but yeah. let's, let's go on. to the lesson. Yeah, let's <laughs> <laughs> Because before we go to the lesson, though, let me tell you this. God's plan is for each individual. That's the plan. If I would be faithful in that plan as an individual, it will also affect the whole worldwide church. Amen. Amen. The very reason why <laughs> you've got to you got to be thankful of the of the system that we have. Compared to other religious organizations, you you must be thankful. Don't be so critical because if there are individuals who may be greedy, <clears throat> God will take care of them. Exactly. I have seen people that have been out of the church, out of the work because of that. <clears throat> but if you are, if the question really is, are they faithful? If not, then there's a problem. That's your problem. The problem is, the question is, am I faithful as an individual? Amen. That's the, that's the point of our lesson. <laughs> the point of our lesson is, it's not speaking about the organization. It's speaking of you. The lesson speaking is not even me. about system. Yeah. The lesson <laughs> is about me. me. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you know, I want to I wanna leave everybody in the mind of the example of Zacchaeus. Yes. Because, I mean, you see a man that made his riches doing what? Tricking the poor people. Now, you know, when people saw that Jesus invited Zacchaeus, <laughs> hey, let's go have a conversation. People were mad. Yeah. What? Are you going to see that with that man? He's taking all our money. But they didn't see what Jesus was actually trying to do. Jesus was actually trying to do what we are being talking in this lesson. Change his heart. Yeah. Change my heart. Amen. Transform our ideas. And when he did that, you know, Zacchaeus apparently came under spiritual conviction. And at the end, his heart were changed. And what did he do? He promised there to do what? You know, I'm going to do the right thing. And I'm going to send it out. Yes, my sister. If you notice the <clears throat> difference between the rich young ruler and mm -hmm. Zacchaeus that you brought up, yeah. okay? The rich young ruler has everything. And he went running to Jesus and asked, what else do I lack? Yeah. Because he knows he's got everything, right? But Zacchaeus, once he knows, once he learned about the good news, about salvation, he himself said to Jesus right away, I will give how many fold to yes. those whom I cheated, yes, whom I stolen from. See, he didn't, Jesus didn't have to ask him. He volunteered right away and said, Lord, I'm going to give to them already what I've 
I've taken from them. And look at that, that both of them have the same opportunity. Exactly. So you can see the differences here. Now we can apply it to both of us. I mean, to ourselves. What are we sacrificing for? Are we willing to sacrifice for the sake of God's work? Or are we hoarding it for ourselves? So that's the two things here. We cannot serve God and we cannot serve the world at the same time. Mm -hmm. So the point here, as I'm going to, as we're saying, we're going back. This lesson that we're learning every week, every day is for us. Because remember, salvation is not organization. Salvation is individual. Amen. And that our lesson that we're studying every night should speak to us individually. To Jesus. Okay? And, and when Jesus would say, I never knew you, he was not going to talk to a church. He was not going to talk to an organization. He was going to talk to individuals. Correct. And it's very important for us to make sure we get this, brothers and sisters, <laughs> that in as much as the rich young ruler missed the opportunity, Zacchaeus was able to grab the opportunity. And, and yes, man. In fact, he said <laughs> when he was setting the, the people apart, uh, even when he's coming, he said, I will give to each man according as his work shall be. Yeah. The Satan cannot put away the whole church because the evidence of you being different is you. You stand up for Jesus. So God is going to give each one of you. I cannot, you know, when I was growing up, I used to say, you know what? If my parents get saved, I'm going to hang on to them. <laughs> I'm going to claim the name Baisa family and I'm going to be saved because my Baisa family is saved. But the reality is the Bible says, and it's very clear, I will give to each man according to his workshop. And, and look at this. I'm at the church. I am the church. You are the church. He is the church. She's the church. We are the church. Do you understand? So if we work individually, to do the work that God is intent to do in each one of us, what do you think is going to happen to the church? The church will be in the right direction. Praise the Lord. Let's and go to Friday. We only have two minutes. <laughs> yeah, we have so many things here. Uh, we but have communion, so let's go to Friday. Let's go to Friday. But brothers and sisters, I also want to mention something. But we need to be very careful as we study the Word of God because the Holy Spirit wants to speak to our heart. Let's not be distracted by what we see. I, Something came to my mind as we were discussing this was the experience of Mary when Mary broke that alabaster Amen. box. Yeah. Outwardly, that was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But individually, Christ knew that she was doing the right thing. Organizationally, it was a waste because Judas actually said, how could she when this could have been used to feed the who? The poor. Let's be careful. Let's be careful here. And that's why Christ wants to speak to your heart. Don't compare yourself. Don't say, no, no. Let, let's get real here. God will speak to your heart. Be faithful in your tithes. Be gracious in your offering. Be willing to minister to the least of this. Because one day, Christ will say, welcome. Because when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me water. When I had no place to be, you gave me shelter. Brothers and sisters, I know we have to close. And, and one thing is, do not allow anything or anyone to distract you from the purpose that Jesus has intended for each one of us. In the plan of salvation, our mission, nothing can distract us from doing what God is intended us to do. And it's not about my opinion. It's about what the Bible is telling us. Let's focus on what Jesus is telling us, what God wants us to do, and not opinion of others. Let's go to Friday. Now, God wanted to bless his people in order that there will be no poor among them. We know that. But because of disobedience, and this is very important. Because God you wants me to obey today, and God wants you to obey. That's why we'll stay continue to have the poor. The scripture teaches us to be proactive in charity, and this activity is part of pure and undefiled religion. Hmm. Love for the what? Vulnerable. And who are those? <laughs> All of us. Bring divine blessing. When we help the afflicted, we also help the Lord in the person of those in need. 
And our spiritual lives must not be defined, and listen to this, it's important, must not be defined by the blessing of riches or by the pretense of religious, but by a genuine response to the divine command to help the poor and unfortunate. And we have a commitment to make to that. <laughs> Let's all stand up, if you can. <clears throat> and the commitment is that we need to pray, pray that our heart will be filled with compassion Amen. for the poor and the desire to help those who are in need. Amen. Amen. My brother, can you please pray for us? Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, you invited us to your house this morning and you told us that we should come just as we are. But your plan is that we will not walk away just as we are because you want to do something in our heart. You want to touch our heart and teach us to recognize, first of all, that we're poor and that we need you. And after you have taken care of us, after we have surrendered all to you, that we can also look around and share the goodness of salvation to those who are poor. And even materially, that you will help us to know and be sensitive that we need to manage your resources by sharing the, the good news and the materials that you have given us with others. For those who are hungry, that they may be fed. For those who are thirsty, that they may receive freshness in the water that comes from you. For those who are without hope, that they may find hope. Lord, please help us. We do not want to remain the same. Help us in our journey with you so that will we be those who will be who you ex really want us to be and help us not to be distracted by things in this world. Help us to remain focused on you. And as we continue to study our lessons week after week, may we be blessed as we ask this same question, Lord, what do you want me to do? Amen. And when you give us that answer, may we rejoice in the prescription that you will give to us and do it joyfully, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Amen. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Uh, since it's communion service today, it's communion Sabbath in the interest of time and since I've been using uh, th this kind of format in ministry, in my ministry, both in the Philippines and here in America women would be here the, hus the husband and wife would be on that uh, little cubicle there room for the children and if we do it now in during the break time it saves us a lot of time so when we go straight to our uh, worship there'll be no break uh, the sermon after the sermon then we go straight to the partaking of the emblems but before we go to the foot washing in order for us to prepare our minds spiritually, uh, I would like to remind you that communion service like this is being called in our church manual as little baptism because that's where you would claim again God's forgiveness for our uh, sinful uh, condition that we are poor, wretched, blind, miserable, and naked. Amen. 
And uh, foot washing is an ordinance of humility. And so we come to Christ in humble spirit, in contrition, and we confess and repent. And, and you know, uh, it, 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 it makes a difference when we feel the depravity of our sinful condition. But thank God, His grace abounds. Amen? So it's humility. It's also about service. That's why we, we wash each other's feet. That's service. Because leadership is not lording over the flock. It's servant leadership. And another significance of foot washing is it's uh, love. I love you as my brother. I love you as my sister. Uh, and since I love you, then I can forgive you. Amen? Any insults, any humiliations, hurts that you have experienced, it should have been when it was announced that we have uh, a communion last Sabbath, then it should have been dealt even that Sabbath, right? So that we can be right with God at this very moment. Amen? Because Paul says that if we would have some bitterness in the heart, then uh, the, the partaking of the emblems could even be a curse to us. And I have added uh, one significance that is not being... Uh, 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 dealt with by anybody probably, it's consecration. It's dedication. You are consecrating your lives to God so that God can use you for a holy purpose. So remember those significance, the meaning of foot washing. And when we come to the table of the Lord, the significance of this is partaking of the emblem, the bread and the wine. And I'll tell you more what meaning uh, and significance of partaking of the bread and of the wine when we go to that. So as we separate, let's have a word of prayer. Uh, if there be some singing that we can do while we are uh, having our ordinance of humility, foot washing, then that would be good. So women will be here. And, and uh, whether it be young ladies or young girls, it will be here. And the men will be in the fellowship hall. And if there are spouses who would be washing their uh, spouse uh, uh, feet, it will be on the other last end of our fellowship hall, the room there for our children. And have that kind of prayer of contrition, of, of repentance, because where sin abounds, grace also abounds. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer, Father in heaven. Yes, Lord. The lesson that we have studied today pricks our hearts. For indeed, we could be like the rich young ruler. We may be like Zacchaeus also. But thank God, a lesson for us that he started wrong, but he ended right. Not like the rich young ruler. Started right, but ended wrong. We don't want to be that way. Job of old. Who got that desire and that compassion and that merciful heart to help the poor. May we be like him also, Lord. We may not like him rich, but whatever we have that you have given to us, Lord, that we can share that blessing to those that are in need. So make us like Job. Have the patience of Job and the faithfulness of Job. So today, Father, we come humbling ourselves that if there be any wicked ways in our hearts. In fact, the Bible says that we are so desperately wicked. The heart is so desperately wicked. But thank you for your grace that can change us. And as we come and serve our brother, or sister in the foot washing. 
that we can see the humility of Christ who came to serve and not to be served unto. Who came to minister and not to be ministered unto. And we thank you for what he had done when he came here on this earth to seek and to save that which was lost. And all of us thank God that we are found. And now that we are, we are being found by the great and loving, wonderful shepherd, that we are also to go and find and seek the lost sheep so that there be one fold and one shepherd as we respond to the worldwide slogan of I will go. Thank you, Father, for reminding us in this wonderful lesson quarterlies that we, uh, lessons in this quarterly that we have that we must be faithful stewards of the goods of life that you have bestowed and blessed us. Thank you, Father, that we can be like Jesus, giving, 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 and not getting, getting, getting. For where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. So bless us now as we go to the ordinance of humility, and as we serve each other in the band of love, of forgiveness, of peace. Thank you, thank you, Father, that we can be reminded of that great love as we have our communion service. Today we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we welcome also our Burmese brethren that are here with us for our foot washing and for our communion service. So let's have some uh, 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 holy silence as we go and and, and, and conduct the foot washing where we are assigned. God bless one and all.
Good morning again, church. Uh, as you prepare your mind and yourself for the communion service, and as we wait for some of the people that are still there, we would like to share with you some announcements that we have. So this is the time that you pull up your calendar and you pay attention so that you can participate in each one of them. The first one that I have, and I want you to pay attention because today we have a lot that is in our calendar uh, that is gonna go on. So number one is we have board meeting. Board members, we have board meeting. But also we have Pathfinder and we have Adventures meeting, okay? We have board meeting, Pathfinder, and Adventures meeting. So I would like to ask the board members. I know, I know this is going to be hard for you. I know this is going to be hard for you. But let's try to see if we can meet right after church. Because the thing is that we have Adventure Pathfinder, and we have also rehearsal with, with the orchestra. So there's a lot going on, and... The time is constrained because, you know, we have in our calendar uh, things that we need to discuss, but we want everyone to participate on them. So I want to make the deal with the, with the um, board members. If you can, let's stay behind after the worship so that we can, uh, I'll give you a minute so you can go out and I know we have potluck. We're going to ask somebody to help us to save some for us because then right after we had the adventure by finding and we also had the continuation for the bible study with the kids so there's a lot but praise god because we have things to do amen uh another thing that i want to mention is this i want to praise the lord because as a church we made a commitment in regards to our building project and despite i mean there is a lot of people that are contributing, and we praise God for that. But there's also a way, because people were asking, you know, how can I help? How can I help? Well, guess what? We, um, we took the responsibility of cleaning the church. And the fund, the money that we were paying to clean the church is going to the building project. And praise God, because it's been how long? A year already? A year, yeah. More than a year that we have been cleaning the church with the help of you, volunteers. I praise God because we have people dedicated coming every week to, to clean the church. But we still need you to help us to keep that fund to come into the building project. So if you are willing, we have a, 
sheet outside in the board that you can write down your name. You can talk to Grandma Rosie, or you can talk to me or Pastor, and we can set up a day for you and your family to come. There are different people that are coming. I see some people that come as a family, and there's families that come together, and they, you know, they, they said a day, can, can we come this coming Sunday? This family and X and Y family, and, you know, we made provision for that. We have all the cleaning supplies. All you need to bring is your willingness to come and do the work. And we need to make arrangement with you because we need to open the church for you, and uh, we're willing to do that as well. So please approach if you're willing to help to make that a reality. Praise God, it's going to happen. This uh, month, this is not updated. This is just by what we have since last week. Uh, our goal, our mainly goal every month is $10,000. As last week, we have close to $5,000. We still need to push a little bit. We can make it by the grace of God. We still have way of the month, we still have a couple more Sabbath that we can, uh, one more Sabbath, right? No, this Sabbath and then next Sabbath uh, to complete the goal of $10,000. And before I give you an update, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention one more announcement that we have. Uh, and this is going to start February the 26th, 8 p.m. It's going to be every day. 7 p.m. Okay, 7 p.m. is going to be live stream. It is with Fomana. Fomana is going to be live stream. NAFCA. 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 Sorry. It's still Fomana, but it's NAFCA. So NAFCA uh, is starting the program every night at 7 p.m. It's going to be live stream. Uh, I don't know if we, we have already the information that we can share with the church if not, we're going to make sure to send it out to you so that you can keep it at hand. And February 26th is going to be Sunday at 7 p.m. You can click. There you go. It's there. You can click and go to the NAFCA, Honoring God, God's Hand on Earth. This is going to be every night from February 26th to March 3. Now, that week, that week, our prayer meeting, we're going to transition to this meeting, okay? For those who come to prayer meeting on Wednesday, we're going to join the NAFCA on Wednesday and Vesper as well, okay? So instead of logging into our regular link for meeting every week, we're going to join NAFCA for that week. So that's why I want you to write it down and keep it in mind so that you uh, participate on this. I have one more big announcement. You know, we have been praying and working in regards to our building project. Uh, this coming Saturday, I was going to wait for Pastor, but he's taking the microphone. This coming Saturday, we have a visitor that is coming to our church. It's our own conference president. He's going to be our guest speaker for this coming Saturday. Amen. I want you to come here. I want you to bring your family. I want you to be here as well. I mean, it is a blessing. I want him to see the reality of our needs of having a new sanctuary. We're going to discuss some things with him as well in that regard. We have been having this conversation with him. They acknowledge, they know that we have our approval, but we ask for one more help. And we need to continue pushing and praying so that we can have our groundbreaking, and the reality of having our sanctuary in this place. Amen? Are we getting close to that? So God is good. You know, we're so happy for your contribution that you do every month and for your faithfulness. And to see everything that you guys do, not only when you put some of those funds for the building project, but just by your collaboration and cooperation in doing the big things that you do, even when you come and do the scripture reading, even when you come and do the tithes and offering, the garden of prayer, when you come and participate in the clubs and, and all that, this is church. Amen? 
And that's why we are a community of believers, a family that come together in unity to honor God's name. One more thing that I want to say is this. Today is communion service. I want you to use this as an opportunity to honor God's name. I know God is present, but I know we have an enemy too. And one of the things that he won't like us is to be engaged in anything that can help us to grow spiritually. The ambulance are here. The humility uh, ritual is going to be here. Take the opportunity to make things right. Amen. And you know what I'm talking about. In the name of Jesus, by one only spirit, there is unity. In the name of Jesus, by one, one spirit, there is love and compassion. And God is calling us so that we can make the right decision to rededicate our life to Jesus Christ. So today, just not just by taking the wine and the bread, but more than that, remember the symbolism of the body and the blood. And today, make the, re the, the rededication of our life, the commitment to continue growing spiritually in our life in the name of Jesus. Not in the name of Isa, not in the name of Hansel or Brian or anything, but in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? So let's make this day the best. Because we know that Jesus is coming soon. Let's prepare our heart. Let's prepare our mind for what is coming now in the communion service. I'm going to ask pastors to please come here and pray for each one of us. So let's all stand up. Close your eyes. Prepare your mind. Prepare your heart. I'll give you 30 seconds. If, if, if you want, I can extend it to one minute to allow you to right now Ask God to forgive you, to forgive you, to prepare your mind. And then Pastor will seal our commitment today as we prepare our mind and our heart for this communion service. Our gracious, kind, loving, heavenly Father, we come to you as your people, called by your name. And we are here bringing all of our cares, our concerns, even our issues, Lord, to you. Because you have invited us, come all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So we are invoking your holy presence to be enshrined in our hearts that we can experience the peace of forgiveness, the power of consecration through the indwelling and empowerment of the Holy Spirit. The songwriter says, nothing in our hands we bring, but only to the cross we cling. So accept us, not because of our merit, but in the merit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, accept us. And you already have accepted us into the beloved, so we thank you, Lord. Speak to us. 
in the power of the emblem today as we partake and looking forward for your promise to your disciples that you will do this in that kingdom that you have prepared for us and all of us that are here will be there in your in your power and by your grace we will as you help us to remain faithful till the end we pray in jesus name amen As we are ready, I'm going to ask the deacons to please come forward and go to every aisle and serve us as we give our tithes and offering for today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for giving us your blessing and for giving us the opportunity to return what belongs to you. In front of us, there is a vast of necessities in this community, in this world, and even in our lives. We have plans and goals that cannot be done unless you are the center of everything. So we thank you, Father, 
for being the center of our lives and giving us the opportunity to give our tithes and offering the contribution to continue your ministry. Continue to bless this church and every family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Happy Sabbath, Church. May I ask everyone to please kneel as we pray. Let us put ourselves in the presence of God. All glory belongs to you, O Lord. We come to you in prayer to glorify your name, not because of what you do, but because of who you are. You deserve all the glory, honor, and praise we can offer. You are glorious, wonderful, and merciful. Forgive us, gracious God, for those times your heart is saddened by our selfishness. For those days when we forget, forgive us. When our lives get distracted and our focus is shifted, forgive us. When we impose our own will, forgive us. When, we, when our praise and worship fail to please you, forgive us. We are often more willing to accept forgiveness than to forgive, more willing to accept your love than to share it with those who have hurt us. Forgive us, Father. We ask, Father God, that you also teach us to forgive as you forgive us. Draw us close to you. Embrace us once again in your loving arms and enable us to follow you in worship and grateful service each day of our lives. Forgive us for when we don't thank you enough, Father God. We give you thanks for all for the pleasures of this day of worship. We humbly come before you in appreciation of your goodness and for all your blessings to us. We thank you for our family, our friends, our church, our health, our freedom, and the people surrounding us whose lives touch us more than they, they, they ever possibly know. Father God, we praise you for helping us draw close to you despite our hardships and struggles. Thank you for reminding us to hold on to your promise and to never give up. May our weaknesses make us stronger in our faith and by knowing you're in control. We thank you for blessing us beyond measure. We are ever grateful for your unending grace and mercies. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we are safe with you and your purpose and plans will not fail. We give you thanks for our comfort and prosperity as we share our blessings with others. We are grateful for your protection, not only for ourselves, but also for our loved ones. We are also thank you, Lord, that no matter what the circumstances are, we can count on you to shelter us and to give us your strength. We offer ourselves to you, Father God, every concern that we may have in the future, every present problem and every past mistakes. Purify, purify us and make us new. Please show us how we can bring hope, peace, and encouragement to this broken world. We pray, Father God, for our church, for our, for our pastor, our church leaders, that we may always find courage and continue to serve you and to spread your words. Empower our speaker today as he preached the gospel to help us understand the need of evangelism and to help us evangelize gospel according to your will. We know, Father God, that you care deeply for us and that you care deeply about our pain. And so we ask, Father God, for comfort, especially to those who are sick and suffering. We pray for your mercies and healing, that they may find joy even in the midst of their difficult times. We also pray for our children, Father God, that as they grow up, steer them the desire to become transformed 
by your word. Help them to make the right choices and help them to find comfort knowing that you are in you are there to guide and protect them. Father God, you know the desire of our hearts and we trust we trust you as your so as our source because you are our great provider. We know, Father God, that the problems of the world around us can be frightening, but you are greater than our problems. We are grateful that we can always count on you. Your will is perfect and your plans are good. Your power is perfected in our weaknesses and is greater than any situation that we might face. Thank you for showing us your faithfulness every day. Amen.
Open up your Bibles to Hos, to John 313. Please stand in reverence of God's word. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, then we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what will but in what we will be his nor yet appeared, but we know that when he appears we shall be like him, because he we sh we shall see him as he is, and everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure.
Amen. No greater love than this. And love is all that is. That is our homily for today as we come to our communion service. You know, communion service is so very, very important for God's people because, as I've said, that's where we can come together and consecrate our lives to Him who first love us and signify also that we love Him because He first love us and we love each other. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, speak to us in the power of your word and may your humble servant be hidden behind the cross and you alone be lifted up. For I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Love is all there is. You know, the Apostle Paul, let me see if it works, our computer, uh, my, my clicker. Did, did, did you put the clicker there? The clicker? Still not working? Okay. The Apostle Paul, who was once the persecutor of God's people, became the great preacher. Amen. In one of his writings, he said here, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted. What's those words? Rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ. That's very important. If you don't have any purpose in life, if you have that uh, one purpose, that's already good enough for your spiritual life. Amen. To know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. That's the object of Christianity. That's the, object, that's the mission of Christ when he came here to seek and to save that which was lost so that you can have the fullness of God. That we can be partakers of his divine nature. And, and that's why Paul says here that we have to know the love of God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh my, it's not working. <laughs> probably uh, we, will use, we will use what you have there. <laughs> I, I probably it's since it's too cold, I didn't uh, recharge this because I recharged it last Sabbath when I heard. Use it in the other church. Don't miss this important thing, dearly beloved. It says here, this is the unchangeable Bible fact that God loves you so wonderfully and relentlessly. That's very comforting to us. You know uh, what had happened in Syria and in Turkey? Is it that God's love has already ended in those part of the... Uh, in that part of the world that he was able to, uh, to allow this thing to happen. But again, amidst all of the troubled world that we are at, still it says there that we are so wonderfully and relentlessly loved by God. And it says in 1 John 3, 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. We are sons and daughters of God. That is very comforting to us who may be having some kind of despondent feelings, some kind of discouragement that you are in a hopeless world, that you are probably you are even have problems in your family, in your relationship and all that. But God is telling us we are his children. Amen. And that makes the difference. You have been rooted and firmly established in love. Three words that needs to be internalized in this verse. Number one is rooted. It pictures you as a great tree. You have a, a tree, an oak tree in your, uh, in your uh, uh, yard uh, uh, whose roots have penetrated deep into the rich soil of God's love. <clears throat> so that's the question there. <clears throat> is your life rooted in God's love? I mean, it's all of the indifference that we can experience here in this earth. The hatred, the anger, the hate crime that uh, we can even watch in TV. The question really is, is your life rooted in God's love? Think of this. 
to be rooted in something means you are drawing nourishment from it. Your life, your food, your water. So the spiritual lesson, dearly beloved, is God sustains you and causes you to flourish. Praise the Lord. And, and when you flourish in the Lord, spiritually speaking, then you, it follows everything. You can be emotionally uh, at peace with yourself. You, you, you can go through all of the trials and tribulations in this life. Why? Because you know that God is sustaining you and he will let you flourish and go through all of the tunnels in life. Because after the tunnel, there is light shining. Amen. So the illustration that uh, uh, Paul is telling you is this. It's like an oak tree, not rooted out by past hurricane in your yard. It shows its evergreen leaves because it is rooted inside the ground. Amen. And once you are rooted in God's love, here it says we are His by faith in the Son of God. Who, who, we, we who are His by faith in the Son of God are rooted in love, absorbing our life from the love of God and living out that love. And we can show it to others. I don't know. It was providential, inspirational, inspired by the Holy Spirit. That the Sabbath school program of today is speaking about love and speaking about love for one another. Have you ever realized that we as a church family, in spite of the, uh, of the diversities that we have, whether we be Filipinos, we still belong to different ethnic, ethnic groups, right? <laughs> I think if I'm not mistaken, Filipinos here uh, have six ethnicities. And we got Hispanics, we got the, the Afro-Americans, we, uh, we got everybody. But we are one family. In fact, we are so happy that the Burmese congregation here in Eastern joined us here for communion service. Because they wanted also to be a part of how we as a church con can, could consecrate our lives to God. You know, it has been my uh, uh, plan that we will do it for the first part of January. But because of the many activities that we have both here and in the other church, it's still nice that we are doing it in, the, in this first quarter of the year. Amen? So that we can start the year consecrating our lives to God, uh, showing our love to one another, not only that vertical relationship that we have with God, but also our horizontal relationship with one another. And when you look around here in our church, we are no longer metropolitan, we are cosmopolitan. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but the question is, is that, is that band of love uniting us together as one church family or it is because we are just here because it's Saturday and we ought to be in church. But you can still be physically here but mentally absent and emotionally absent, right? So the question is, am I rooted in that love that God has shown to me? So whatever prevailing winds of strife that is going all around us, we can still stand strong and firm like an oak tree. And we can live connected to our source of life. Jesus, who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And be strong in that power of love. Number two. You are also firmly established in love. The illustration there, the picture, the mental picture that uh, Paul is trying to picture it in your mind. You are like a building, firmly established. He took uh, 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 that in, from architecture and, and he said, you are firmly established in love. Picture for a moment. In Christ, you are like a building that has its foundation driven down into the bedrock below. The rock of all ages, Jesus Christ our Lord, standing firm on that solid foundation, you are firmly established. Amen. So whatever philosophies and principles the world would offer you, especially you, you young children in school, you, you, you have been taught uh, evolution uh, or whatever uh, philosophy and principle that is out of the Bible, that's the world view. But the best view is the it's the Bible view or God's view. Amen. It's God's worldview. And when you follow that God's worldview according to the Bible, then you will not be uh, finding yourself corrupted by the wrong philosophies of this earth, of this world. But you will be rooted in that very, very foundation 
Jesus Christ, the rock of all ages. And you will be grounded, not only established, but grounded in love. You are also both established in love, in that great foundation of love. Amen. So there are two words here that convey, picture this, endurance. When you buy something, like your car, you want longevity and durability, right? God wants us also to endure to the end. Because he that will endure till the end will be saved. Amen? So it pictures endurance. It, it, it's, it, it pictures also of nourishment. Where do we nourish our souls? Where do we nourish our mind? Where do we nourish our hearts? Our feelings, our emotions. Do we nourish it into the norms of this earth? Or we nurture it? with the spiritual principles out of the word of God. So it speaks of nourishment. And then it speaks of a solid perseverance, even though the going may be rough and tough. Only those that are tough in God can keep going. Amen. And, and, and the empowerment comes from the Holy Spirit who dwells in us because He is the one that resides in you as promised by Jesus. That throughout all of the tribulations that will come into your lives, when, when the Holy Spirit is in you, then you don't have any problem because you become so powerful, invincible like God. Amen? So think of endurance, nourishment, strength, and solid perseverance. That's why Paul says that we'll be Understanding the depth, the breadth, the width, the height of God's love. And this love is not what the world thinks about it. It is coming from the Greek word agape. And we found that, we, we got that all in creation. When God created you in his own image, that's love. Created you in his own image. He stooped down, took a clay, molded, breathed the, the, the spirit of life, and Adam became a living soul. That's love. And he showed it because when that image was marred because of sin, the lost image must be restored back. And so he, he, they devise. Ellen White says it's not an afterthought. The plan of redemption is not an afterthought. So they design. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit design a plan whereby we can be restored back to that image. And that has been demonstrated at the cross of Calvary. And so that love, that agape love, was demonstrated both in creation and in redemption. Amen. And so if you experience that love, dearly beloved, it, you cannot help yourself but to show that love to others also. Even though they may be different in your skin, they may be weird looking to you, even though they, you, you, you may think that they are ugly, huh? because you think yourself you are beautiful. But you know, you know I'm preparing a sermon, it's entitled, The Good, The Bad, and The, the Beautiful and The Ugly. <laughs> But thank God, even though sin had made us so ugly, we can be beautiful. I love that song. Uh, what's that song now that you sang? The beauty of heaven, right? The beauty of heaven. Even though sin had marred me, had put us in, in that kind of mess, God is storing back that image so that we can have the beauty of heaven. That's the cross. That's why we say, Love, it is all that is. And this, we know that we love the children of God. What's this now? This is the evidence of what, when you say, I love you, this is the evidence when we love God that the practical relationship and keep his commandments. We can only love the brethren. We can only love the erring. We can only love the weird. We can only love the unlovable. If we have that love of God, if we are rooted in that love, in that agape love, established firmly, not because of my emotions, 
but it's because of my will. It's not, it's not rooted in my emotions because emotions can change. But if it's rooted in my in my kokote, we call it in Filipino. <laughs> in our brain, in the frontal lobe of, 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 of our brain, then we can always be in love with God and with one another. Amen? Yes. Yeah, I, I got that picture and I said, my, it's good to show this. It's a big family of metropolitan church. And the question is, are we really in love with each other? The way we are in love to God who first loved us. Think of this. Agape is the love word for absolute. What's this now? And self-centered and brutal sacrifice. My, I, I quoted that from an Adventist preacher. Love word, the, the agape it comes from that love word for absolute and self-centered, brutal sacrifice. And where can we find that brutal sacrifice? What is the epitome of that brutal sacrifice that God has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And you and I was lost. It's the familiar text that we know ever since we are a child. For God so loved the world. Right? That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You fathers, have you seen your wife so sacrificing in their love? I saw my wife. The first baby that we have, Brian. My, he, she would be awakened in the wee hours of the night. And so I said, well, probably I can help you. But since I got problem with light, Madam Tess, I put a light, a candle in a kerosene lamp so that the light will just go through the ceiling so that when I, uh, I would uh, 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 mix, because he was, Brian was double, uh, what do you call that, mix feeding. So I will, uh, I will try to mix uh, milk for him I can still go back to sleep because my eyes will not gl glare by that electric light in our room. But I found out and I discovered that mother's love is very sacrificing. It reminds me of my mother. We are a poor family. And when we eat to you, you know to you, right? Dried fish, you who don't know to you. It's a dried fish. And so, uh, when, when, when the number of the toyo is not enough for us, he would sacrifice his, her share and give it to the, to, to the one that is lacking. That's the mother's love. How about the father's love? <laughs> Go to Ephesians chapter 5. The father's love must be like Christ also who sacrificed himself for the church, right? The bride of Christ. So if the mother is sacrificial, sacrificial love, the father is also a sacrificing love. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Consider this for a moment. Agape is love emanating from the choice of the lover alone. Do you believe it? Agape is love emanating from the choice of the lover alone. The agape is never caused by the object of love. I don't know, with Jenny and Brian, when Brian loves Jenny, probably it's because uh, 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 Brian, in his mind, he willed and he, he chose to love Jenny even though Jenny was not loving him yet, right? Just think of your relationship. Did Brother uh, uh, Adi love Sister Modope, because Sister Modope loved him already. No, he need, that's why we have courtship, right? <laughs> that's why we need courtship. That's why if you go to the book of Hosea, in, in, in the living paraphrase, it says that I will bring you again to the wilderness and court you there. God says. What happened in the wilderness with the children of Israel? In the wilderness, there was rumbling, there was murmuring, there was grumbling. There was uh, everything, you name it. And Ellen White says the sins of God's, of the children of, 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 all the, of all the Israel is the same sins of God's people now. And she mentioned one, which is murmuring. 
So when you murmur against the pastor and you murmur against the elders and you murmur against each other, you are duplicating what had happened in the wilderness. That's why God is bringing us back there. And He will court us. Woo us once more so that we can be in love with Him. He loves us not because we love Him. That is what is said there. Agape is love emanating from the choice of the lover alone. The agape is never comes by the object of love. Praise the Lord. He didn't see me as I was. He didn't see you as you were. He, say, he sees what you could become. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's not looking at your condition. He's looking to your direction. And that's why grace abounds where sin also abounds. But grace is not a license for you to do what you would like to do. Even though it's against God's will. Grace restrains you to do against God's will. Amen. Because love is the fulfilling of the law. To be loved by God is an act of charity. We are all in charity. We are all in charity cases. Sometimes we don't want to be uh, in the charity fund because we think that we have, we have money. But we are all, spiritually speaking, in charity. We are all in the same level before the cross. We are all sinners in need of God's grace. And so, John the Beloved, who experienced that love, from his master, Jesus Christ says, Look, behold, look at how great a love the Father has given us that we should be called God's children. Do you believe so? That you are God's children? Do you believe you young uh, ladies that you are a God, God's daughter? You young boys, do you believe that you are God's son? So if you believe that you are God's son, then you've got to show that kind of agape love that he showed to you. Probably to a bully student in your school. I'm not saying that you'll be victimized. You just keep being victim of that bullying student. Because you can report that to your teacher. And the school will manage that bully student, right? But you can still love them in spite of the fact. Because that is what agape is all about. It's loving the unlovable and the undesirable. That is the kind of love that God has shown to us and to each one of us. And so today, as, uh, as Tiara will sing, if that isn't love, think of how God has loved you so much. If that isn't love, Come on, uh, Chera. Chera, huh? Chera, okay. Chera. I didn't know that you, you are uh, loaded for today, but it's good you, you took that uh, challenge when I asked you to sing this song, if that isn't love. I would like to sing it myself, but I'm not a singer, Sister Zim. And so I asked her to sing. And think of what God has done if that isn't love.
if there isn't love, he left the splendor of heaven. And if you just think of how God has loved us so much, even this week alone, amen? Just think of this week. Or even just the 24 hours that we have spent. If that isn't love. Love is all that is. Amen. And today, we'll be celebrating that love. As we focus our thoughts to what God has done through Jesus Christ in order for you and me to be called his sons and his daughters. Amen? Thank you again for that song, If That Isn't Love. I'll be singing with you in heaven someday. <laughs> but for now, I'll just let others sing. But I can feel that love. That's the challenge for each one of us. Because it says there you are rooted, firmly established, rooted, established, or grounded in the King James Version, and the third word is the agape love. Grounded in that agape love. Show it, dearly beloved. Show it to anybody. But let it first be shown in your home. Because charity or love begins at home. In your relationship as husbands and wives. In your relationship children to your parents and parents likewise to your children. Then when we come to church, we can transpose it, translate it with one another. Amen? Because love, it is all that is. So we'll be welcoming you to the table of the Lord. And as we welcome you to the table of the Lord, we would like you to uh, focus, think of that love as we will be going through all of the uh, details of the service until we partake of the bread. And in the partaking of the bread, think of that love again. Because if Christ was broken, which is the representation representation of the broken bread that will be passing, serving you, was willing to be broken. The question now is, will I be willing to be broken for you? For you, my brother. For you, my sister. For you, my friend. That's the question. Because love is sacrificing. And the wine that we'll be drinking fruit of the vine that we'll be drinking, speaking of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. May you be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And may you be in that blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ. So that when the enemy, arch enemy, assails you, you could just say in the power of that name, Jesus, depart from me. Ye, you, Satan, get thee behind me. And we will live victoriously in that power of love. Rooted, grounded in love. And we can show it to others. Amen. I will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and it starts on verse 23. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, and it says, For I received from the Lord that 
which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. 24, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, when he has supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink, in remember of me. As we uh, kneel down in prayer with the deaconesses and the deacons and with the elders, if you would be in an attitude of prayer, just sit down and pray with us as we pray for the bread and for the wine. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this moment. In a world that we live in where we hear about balloons and trains derailing and all sorts of chemical things being poured around. In a world we live in where our jobs take our toll in our minds, where school takes the toll of our minds, where rumors and wars and rumors of wars uh, get us preoccupied, yes. we pause at this very moment to remember what you had done for us. Amen. Were it not for grace, I don't know where I would be. Mm. Yes, Lord. But you, because of your agape love, thought of me. And though your body, which is symbolized by this bread, was stripped off the flesh, was hit with lashes, mm. thorns were put on your head, yes, Lord. quipped beyond recognition, beat up, kicked, Brutally, physically, emotionally drained, battered. You did this on our behalf. Yes, Lord. Because you know that it's only through the wounds of your body that we are healed. Amen. We thank you for the healing from above. And Lord, as you died for us, as you allowed your body to be sacrificed for us lord may today may we make that commitment that as you died for us and lived for us through your resurrection that we will also be a living sacrifice for you yes lord now until you come in the clouds of heaven and you can say to all of us well done good and faithful servant enter into the joy of the lord yes lord yes. that is our prayer but in the meantime we want to remember and thank you for the love that you have shown to us. Father, as we come before you this afternoon, we're broken. Yes, Lord. With difficulties in our lives. And as a human tendency, we try to find solutions for ourselves. Yes, Lord. But where do my help come from? My help come from the Lord. Yes, Lord. Here is your people, Lord, in this place today. And we need to be transformed. And that can only happen by the blood of Jesus. Amen. So that's why, Father, as we partake of this emblem, as we symbolize what happened in that cross when you shed your blood to pay the debt of my sin, Mm, yes, Today, Lord. in faith, I can claim in the name of Jesus that I am healed. Yes, Lord. That I am forgiven. And that I have hope in the eternal life, but only by your blood. 
Yes, Lord. So, Lord, that's why we want to deny self at this moment. We want to ask for forgiveness of our sins. And as we drink of this cup, which symbolizes your blood, may this blood do the work. Yes, Lord. And transform our lives. Amen. Change my heart completely. Cleanse me and make me wise. No. Yes, yes, Lord. Thank and you. And now Lord. I can be sanctified by your blood and ready for when you come in the clouds of heaven. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this wonder of opportunity. And as we come before you, we ask that you will transform our life and we claim and ask this by the blood and by the name of Jesus. Amen. We will be passing the emblems, the bread, and the wine together, dearly beloved. So hold it. When you are being served, hold it because we'll be partaking at the same time. So we'll be serving first this row. Uh, the deacon here too would be serving you there. Then we will come to you. In the same way, the first row will also be served. Then after that, we'll be coming to you. And whoever is done first, you can help each other. And while the emblems are being served, dearly beloved, I would like to read a very familiar text that will come into your mind about the suffering servant, Jesus Christ, in Isaiah 53. Who had believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form. Just picture Jesus. Uh, Brian's put it so vivid in his prayer. He had no form nor comeliness, says here. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Battered, bruised, wounded. And sometimes. We like the crown of life everlasting, but we don't want to pay the cost of that crown. <laughs> Think of Jesus, if that isn't love. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we stepped not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. It's because of you and because of me. All by his grace. Because love is all that is. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Could be physically, emotionally, but above all, spiritually. 
All we like sheep. So it includes everybody. All. We like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. So if you have been served by that bread now and by that wine, try to meditate the significance and the meaning of what you are holding if that isn't love. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Because of you, because of you and me. He was stricken, beaten. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. That's why Paul says he became sin for us. That we can be made righteous with the righteousness of God. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Watch this now. As you are holding and as you are about to receive the emblems, this is very comforting here because he said, He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. Picture Christ at the cross. Two thieves, right? One thief didn't change because in one of the accounts in the synoptic gospels both of them were joining the crowd you know sometimes it's easy to join the crowd but what's what you are where you are joining or what you are joining <laughs> but then one account says that the thief rebuked his other the other thief and said, this man is not like us. We are here because of our wickedness. We are here because of our evil deeds. We are here hanging on the cross because of what we have done. But this man, this man, he says, to his fellow thief, has no sin at all to be here with us hanging on the cross. If that isn't love, if that isn't love, and he repented right there and then, he said, "Lord, remembers me when you will be in paradise." And God promised paradise. I forgot to tell you, Shira. Did I pronounce right your name? She Sierra. Sierra. Because the writer of that song is not an Adventist. A uh, believer, he said he took him paradise. He took him to paradise. But biblically speaking, that was wrong. That's why we can insert when you when you next sing it, you can say, "And he promised him paradise." It's my fault I didn't tell you that because that's what the Bible says. <laughs> when a person dies, he goes to the grave, right? It's only the second coming when he will be resurrected. So instead of him, uh, in that uh, him, he took him paradise. We say he promised him paradise. Praise the Lord. Two thieves at the cross, signifying you and me. Which thief are you at? Are you with the repentant, confessing thief, or the stubborn, wayward? Hard, hardened, hardened 
thief. Think about it. And Christ promised him paradise if that isn't love. He saw the travail of his soul right there and there. And, and, and probably I would go even backward. He saw the travail of his soul also when the Roman centurion said, Truly, this is the Son of God. I would love to meet that Roman soldier, that unknown Roman soldier right at the cross, expressing his belief to the one hanging at the cross. He pierced his side, but he said, Truly, this must be the Son of God. So he saw the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. And today, dearly beloved, he's looking for the fulfillment of his travail. And he will be satisfied when we come renewing our faith and our commitment, dedication, consecration to him that we will serve him the rest of our lives. He see that reveal of his soul and shall be satisfied. That he can see Metropolitan Church not only loving him with all their hearts, with all their soul, and with all their mind, but loving each one as a church family. Whether you be a Filipino, whether you be a Hispanic, whether you be a Burmese, whether you be a Karen, whatever race you are at, we can be like Jesus. And He can see the travail of His soul when we come to Him, renewing our lives, our lives to Him, our faith in Him, our love to Him. Because it's only through Him that we can be rooted, grounded, firmly in that love. He first loved us by giving His life at the cross. Think of it, if that isn't love. Did we miss anybody? Did we miss anybody? Jenny? Okay. We don't want anyone to be missed, especially if you really would like to be a part of this. Amen? Because he said to uh, uh, Peter, if you don't have any part of me, then you have nothing of me, he says. It's nice to be aligned and be connected with that power of agape love. Amen? And it will make you a better husband. It will make you a better wife, a better mother, a better father, a better child of God, a better child to your own family, blood family, and a better child in God's family. Think of how He loved you that much. Providing everything. The basic needs of life. The protection and the care. Your career. Your profession. The air you, you breathe. The clothes you wear. Well, you might say, ah, I got a good paying job, Pastor, so that's why I got a, a, I got a nice dress. But again, in Deuteronomy 8, it says, uh, you, 
Don't forget, he says, Lord, your God, who have given you the power to gain wealth. Praise the Lord. Amen. If that isn't love. And today, dearly beloved, this bread is representative of Christ's body that was bruised, bruised, wounded, beaten, buttered, just there without beauty to behold, was made to be seen for us if that isn't love. And this fruit of the vine, he promised his disciples, I will drink this cup, not here on this earth, he says, but in my Father's kingdom. So if you'll be here, if you are here today, dearly beloved, pray that the Lord will help you to be faithful till the end, so that we'll be in that marriage supper of the Lamb, when we all will be joining with all of the saved saints, in that first day that we'll get to heaven and we will see the glories of heaven. But think of this. Many want the crown, but they don't, they don't want to bear the cross. They wanted heaven, but they don't want to pay the cost. There is a cost, not monetarily speaking, but it is denying self. And when we deny self, we can say like Paul, I am crucified with Christ, yet not I lives in me, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, he says, I live, I live by the faith of him who gave his life for me. If that isn't love, take it, drink it, God blessings be yours. While the, well, take your time, take your time. While the cups are being uh, gathered, if you wanted to share a testimony, we'll be having that testimony time as we will be gathering the cups. So don't rush, take your time. The deacons will be waiting for you if you are not done. Take your time. And we can have some testimony time because I might need your testimony at this very moment. Anyone who would come first? Anyone? On this side? Anyone want to share a testimony for today? Praises of God. The great things that God is doing in your life to praise His name for His goodness, His favor upon you. Just want to praise the Lord for answering my prayer. Just this morning, uh, you know, my husband is um, out of country. And so this morning I was praying to God. I said, Lord, I would like to participate in the feet washing, not just for the emblems. What do I do? Please, you know, show me what to do. And then this morning, our sister, <laughs> Swada, sat down beside me. And of course, the, the man left, you know, for the other room. And so I turned to her and I said, Sister, would you like to um, you know, participate in feet washing? And she said, yes. So God is really love because he <laughs> answered his prayer, my prayer immediately. Amen. And I praise him for that. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you, Sister Sin. God bless. Anyone else? Anyone? Okay, Tosin. 
for protecting us everywhere we go. Amen. 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 See? Amen. Amen. Sweet, short testimony of God's power. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. See, you can just say a few words, simple things of His goodness. Anyone else? Thank you, Tosin. Anyone else? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Just raise your hands and we'll bring you the, the microphone. If not, that's fine. We understand the joy that is in your heart as you also praise His name by participating in the emblem. God. Loving us even though we don't deserve it. Amen. 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 Loving us even though we don't deserve it. Anyone else? The children are, are waiting. My brother. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I love this part of church. Praise the Lord's name. Yeah. I um, have some friends. Some of you guys might know a med missionary and uh, lady named Mercy Ballard. And she invited me to go with her on a mission trip to Peru. So I said, sure, I'll go. And she said, hey, we're going to give some talks. You better give a talk. I said, really? She said, what do you want me to do? She said, I want you to give a talk on leaky gut. So I said, okay. She said, you're the GI guy. You, you talk because I'm a physician, right? So, so I went on this trip to Peru, and it was a blessing. <laughs> it really was a blessing. We uh, flew into Lima, went up to a place called Etiquipa in Cusco, and uh, went to Machu Picchu, all because the Lord asked me to go. So... So praise the Lord. I mean, Machu Picchu is a, is a nice place, y'all. You should, you should visit. <laughs> yes. Everybody's calm in Peru. These are the, and these are the calmest dogs I've ever seen in my life. The, uh, the dogs don't bark at you. Any, they just lay around and just look at you. <laughs> and the people are the same way. I was like, they were talking about us because we were down there when all this social unrest was going on. Right? I don't know if you guys heard about that. But about 48 people died in the country. Mm -hmm. But um, the Lord kept us one step ahead of all the trouble. Because my sister was telling me, Bill, you shouldn't go. I said, I'm going to go. I said, this is a missionary trip. And so she said, no, you shouldn't go. I said, I said, listen, it's be all right. Mercy's, Mercy's Peruvian. And so right. she, she and her family are involved. And so we went down there. And we also got the tour of the, the medical school. So our church has two medical schools in South America. One is in, in uh, Argentina. The other one is in uh, Peru. And uh, Mercy's family members are involved with that. So, so we got to, to see the medical school. and. Um, we went up to see the condors. That was a scary thing, y'all. I <laughs> we drove up on these these edges, and you know, you look out the window, you can look like two thousand, three thousand yes. feet down. Wow. It's, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> but I got shorter breath up there. I don't, I, have, I got a little, you know, altitude sickness or something, and I said, "Is there a taxi? Because I got to get out. I, I got to go back down. I can't breathe." They were like, "No, there's no taxis up here." They pulled over and they grabbed this little weed and they rubbed their hands together and they stuck it in my face. I was like, what are they doing? And they, and they were giving me all this stuff so I could breathe. But I made it over to the mountaintop because the mountains are higher than, than the Rockies. So the Denver is about 5,000 feet. These are like 11,000 feet. Wow. And so I got, I don't know how, I, I didn't know if I was going to make it. My, my fingers were turning blue and stuff. I was like, oh, Lord. I said, we got to get a tax out this mountain. They said, no, you just got to do this and you'll be okay. I said, okay. So, um, so we went there, we saw the condors, it was a blessing. We went to a couple of churches, of our churches down there, and we gave uh, talks to the churches, and it was just a blessing, one of the best trips I ever had. So praise the Lord. Amen, amen. 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 Praise amen. God. Amen. Praise God. That is signifying that we are one family in Jesus Christ. Yes. Whether yes. here in Peru, anywhere, God is calling his people. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, brother, for that. Anyone else? Rami? I praise the Lord for his sustainable, <clears throat> for his sustainable grace. Because as I look around, <clears throat> my friends are starting to fall one after the other. And I'm still here standing 15 years ago. Amen. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> My friend even told him, you know, I met the guy, Rossetti, and then in the front said, 
What happened? Is he dead already? I said, no, he's still alive. <laughs> and up to now, praise the Lord. Yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. Amen. 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 We rejoice Lord. with you too. God is good. Thank you <laughs> for reminding us every year that God is faithful and God is good to his people. God is good. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anna. Happy Sabbath, church. Um, I don't really like this part, <laughs> but I'm standing here before you because I want to praise God. <laughs> I know Queer it's Earl okay. and it's the okay. young it's adults okay. will laugh at me, but I want to stand here because I want to praise God. Um, it's going to be yeah. almost a year ago by next month that my family and I have gone through like the most unimaginable, um, unimaginable, um, you know, experience that we've had. Um, so a year ago, my brother, um, you know, got himself into a situation where he had to run from somebody. And he told me that he was driving a truck and he said the only way out, he thought he got away from, you know, he, he thought he found a good spot. But as soon as he got there, he said the only place he could go to is basically, um, you know, hit the gas pedal into the woods to his left. Mm. And he said, I hit that gas pedal so hard. I was probably running 80 miles an hour. And he said, it, it's woods. I mean, can you imagine that? Woods. <laughs> And he went to there and he said he found a spot where he, he got out of the car, ran away with the people with him. And I told him, I said, and you came home in one piece? Like, can you imagine that? He says, I said, I know God was with you. And I told him, I can just see God. You know, I can just see Jesus running in that woods, telling the trees, move out of the way. You know, my son's coming this way. <laughs> and my brother was in tears and he said i knew he was there because as soon as i turned left i lost control of that truck and for some reason the the steering wheel was just moving left right like you know and anyway a few days later we got it you know we got a hold of the right people and we found this truck and the cops told me that it's unbelievable because there was no dent in the truck. Whoa. I mean, I can't, I don't even think I can maneuver a truck 20 miles an hour in the woods, <laughs> but there was no dent in the truck. And so I just want to praise God Whoa. because that problem that it's a very big problem, but you know what? God, it's almost like God pressed delete and that didn't even occur, you know? And so <laughs> I just want to praise God. I just want to stand here before you and tell you that god is good Amen. and in those, all the time this ordeal happened in a week it was the longest week in my life it was like i cried every night but before but as i went through it i knew that i had to trust god and so i told him god this didn't catch you by surprise but i know you have a plan and i'm just gonna sit here and watch it unfold and so i prayed and i prayed and like I said, God's answer was more than what I could ask for. And so I just want to thank God um, for all the good things that he has done for me. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. All, the, all time. the time. All the time. <laughs> God is good. We have time for a couple more testimonies. Anyone else? Bronze. All right. So I don't have to stand up because I'm holding a baby. <laughs> we can hear you um, in connection to our program today um, I would like to read Colossians 3.13 it says uh, bear with each other and forgive one another mm. if any of you has a grievance um, against someone forgive as the Lord forgave you so Amen. if there is someone here that I have hurt unknowingly or unintentionally um, please forgive me. That's all. Amen. 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 <laughs> amen. amen. Thank you, bros. I amen. love that. I love that. <laughs> amen. Yes. Anyone else? We have time for one more. One more. 
Right, tool four. Okay, it happened like during the Athens camping. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunday we went, we are already going home, but our car broke. So mm -hmm. we are stuck in Athens Sunday, and then we went home Monday. Uh, our God is so good that our car was uh, just broken in downtown Athens and not on the freeway. Or oh, else yeah. it was Sunday and then nobody will tow us. It's <laughs> So that's why nobody will tow us. There's no rent a car because it's Sunday. So we're all absent from the school. But anyway, we are all safe and God is so good. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh -huh. Oh, didn't know. <laughs> that's, that's still well, providence. God is good. Yeah. I mean, uh, God took care of it. Amen. 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 Well, we can still stand the mercy. Anyone else? <laughs> we don't want to miss anyone. Yeah. But if not, Pastor, can we sing now? <laughs> yeah. Let me let me have the testimony. Yeah. I, I have an intro last Wednesday in our prayer meeting. We went with my wife uh, to my ophthalmologist last. Uh, uh, what's that day now, mommy? Uh, Thursday, right? Oh, no, no, Tuesday. And I was telling her my concern. She's a lady ophthalmologist. Because I got problem with my peripheral view. Because this is the surgery in my right, right? Right eye. Yeah. <laughs> I could not see Brother Hansel, but I could see... If I would be here together with uh, you, sit down. I couldn't see Brother Hansel. I could see Brian. Yeah, that's the limited view of my peripheral view. And he said to me, she said to me, we cannot change that, but we will maintain your vision because you are worse. She repeated that one time. She said that one time uh, to me. You were worse than any of my patients. And your surgery is a success story because some of them partly blind. Some of them lost their sight. And then she said again, it must really be a miracle. Amen. So I just praise the Lord. <laughs> so even though I could not see Brother Hansel here in my peripheral view, I still could use my peripheral view the other uh, uh, eye, but I still could see you all. And I could read. I, I asked him if I can change my reading glass, and he said, no, your prescription glass is still good. But if you like, we can. Uh, can I have it uh, when I'll be going back to the Philippines for a crusade, like uh, uh, May or June? And he said, yeah, you can use that order for a year, she told me. But your prescription glasses has no problem because you still has a 20-20 vision with that eye surgery that you have. Uh, so I praise the Lord. I could see the beauty of my wife still. <laughs> I could see the beauty of everyone here in church and drive, yeah, I can read my Bible, I can, I can, uh, I can uh, prepare sermons. So pray for us because I was uh, requested to conduct a field school of evangelism for theology students in the Philippines July. Uh, we'll be, I'll be conducting July uh, uh, a crusade July 21 to August 5. And we, I, I, I'm one of the lecturers for the Field School of Evangelism for Theology students. So pray that my eyes will, as the ophthalmologist said, that she will maintain all of the knowledge that she has to maintain my sight in my right eye so that I cannot be even just partly blind. Praise the Lord, right? Well, even just partly blind, that's already okay with me. But if it's not partly blind, it's all 2020, even without this, uh, with the surgery. Praise the Lord. Because it will be different when we will be in the Philippines because it's hot in the Philippines, right? So I don't know how it will uh, change the, the, the temperature with my eye. But again, she told me, 
uh, what what do you name what what's the term for that now? No, no, the the when when they it's 15, he said it's 15, it's normal. It's not like there before it's more than 50. What do you call that uh, term now? The pressure. Yeah, the pressure is she said it's normal. So I just praise and thank the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And so today, I believe you can join everybody, uh, the ones that have said their testimonies and the un unspoken testimonies today, to sing that song, Because He Lives. Amen. That last chorus, that uh, chorus in that song, Because He Lives. Let us all sing together. May the goodness and the love of God the Father and the grace of Jesus Christ shown at Calvary's cross and the communion of the Holy Spirit be yours now and forevermore until that day when we will join the saved throng in heaven singing praises to God's holy name. Telling ourselves that it is because of thee seated in the throne that we are here in heaven. In the meantime, dearly beloved, may our prayer be and help us, Lord, to be faithful till the end. To love you more, even as you love us. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Good, good job, good job. <laughs> God bless, God bless, God bless, God bless, God bless.